as the U.S. convenes the, the leaders of the G8 uh, this coming weekend, there's three issues I think are going to be on many people's minds in, in watching the, the meetings unfold. Um, the first is how well the U.S. can corral its partners to deliver on the food security agenda. Uh, the food security agenda is the U.S. number one priority in terms of development and is following on from a robust set of commitments in 2008 that the world community made to support food security in uh, developing countries. But many of these commitments, both bilaterally and multilaterally, in terms of funding and in terms of implementation, have so fall, far fallen short. So whether the U.S. can move that agenda forward, which I, I actually think they will be able to do, but whether they can, I think is going to be a, a, key, uh, a key test of leadership. Uh, the second issue is the transitions um, in the Middle East and North Africa that we've all witnessed and over the past year and a half. And the question being the, whether the G8 can coalesce behind a shared platform and a shared strategy to support those transitions and to, to help deepen the Arab Spring. Uh, so far, it's been much more rhetoric than reality, a lot of coordination challenges. But the G8 did make a, a commitment to do so uh, and to support these transitions in Deauville in 2011. And so we'll be all watching to, to see whether some kind of transition fund can emerge. Uh, and the third, I think, big issue uh, that's on everyone's minds is this growth versus austerity debate and how well um, the European change of leadership is going to be able to navigate the pitfalls uh, of, this, of this dialogue. And on this issue, I don't see much that will come from the G8. And frankly, it's because many of these conversations have shifted to the G20. Uh, there will be, of course, conversations on the margins uh, because all the European leaders will be assembled. But the real meat of it, um, those conversations are unfolding in the G20. And likewise, with the issues on food security and the support for the transitions, again, I think what we'll see coming out of the G8 are really seeds and starting points for an agreement uh, with partners that are outside of the G8 because ultimately for the a trend the transitions to succeed and for the G8 to be real partners uh, in that work uh, is going to require engaging with partners throughout the region that are not going to be at Camp David uh, this coming weekend and, and likewise um, in terms of supporting the food security agenda the, the key actors here are the partner governments um, in the region whose um, populations are the, the ultimate beneficiaries of the f commitment to increasing opportunities for, for sustainable farming and, and reducing poverty in the agricultural sector. And they all will also need to be at the table. So the, the, the G8 I, I see as a starting point on two issues, probably not much on the third. And ultimately, all these issues, the threads will be taken up in either the G20 or similar forum that have a more expanded membership uh, beyond just the, the G8 partners.